Grandpa Campbell, a man of the earth with a heart drawn to the water, he found solace in the tranquility of nature, and fishing was his symphony. He'd stand by the lake, a silhouette against the rising sun, his weathered face etched with a lifetime of stories. From a young age, I was captivated by his tales of enormous catfish and elusive trout, each fish a trophy, each story a treasure. He'd weave magic with his words, transporting me to those serene mornings on the water, the smell of the damp earth after a night's rain, the gentle rustling of leaves, the soft murmur of the water. These sensory memories are forever intertwined with my grandpa. He wasn't just teaching me to fish, he was sharing his world with me, a world rich with simple joys and quiet wisdom. Those fishing trips were rituals, sacred moments etched in my memory. The alarm clock would buzz before the sun even thought about rising, but the promise of a day with Grandpa, rod in hand, chased away any sleepiness. The drive to the lake was always silent, a comfortable silence. Grandpa would hum along to old country songs on the radio, his calloused fingers tapping on the steering wheel. I'd watch the world blur by, anticipation bubbling in my stomach. We'd arrive at the lake just as the first rays of dawn kissed the water. The air was crisp, heavy with the scent of pine needles and lake water. Grandpa, with the practiced ease of a seasoned angler, would prepare the rods. His movements were deliberate, almost meditative. He'd hand me my rod, a mischievous glint in his eye. Let's see if we can't outsmart some fish today, son. That was our cue. The hunt was on. Grandpa Campbell was the embodiment of patience. He'd sit there for hours, his gaze fixed on the bobber dancing gently on the water. He taught me that fishing wasn't just about catching. It was about observing, about understanding the rhythm of nature. Patience, son he'd say, his voice a low rumble. Fishing is like life. You've got to wait for the right moment, then strike. And strike we did, reeling in rainbow trout, shimmering in the sunlight, their scales catching the light. But the biggest lesson wasn't about hooks or bait. It was about resilience, about casting your line back into the water, even when disappointment tugged at your heart. He taught me that persistence, like the steady flow of the river, was the key to navigating life's currents. Grandpa had a way of finding humour in the smallest things. A tangled fishing line became an opportunity for a playful lesson in patience, a missed catch, a reason to erupt in hearty laughter. He had this contagious laugh, a deep bellow that echoed across the water. I remember one trip when I got my hook snagged on a log. I was ready to give up, frustration building, but Grandpa, with a twinkle in his eye, just chuckled and said, Looks like that old log outsmarted you this time, son. We spent the next hour trying to free the hook, our attempts punctuated by fits of laughter. We never did get that hook back, but I learned a valuable lesson that day. Sometimes the greatest joy comes from embracing the absurdity of it all from finding humour in the face of setbacks. Section 5, Beyond the Fishing Rod Life Lessons Grandpa's wisdom extended far beyond the riverbank. His lessons were woven into the fabric of our fishing trips, imparted with a gentle hand and a knowing smile. He taught me the importance of respecting nature, of appreciating the delicate balance of the ecosystem. He'd say, we take from the earth, son, but we got to give back too. And so we'd carefully release the smaller fish back into the water, whispering silent wishes for their journey. He instilled in me a deep sense of responsibility, a sense of stewardship towards the natural world. His lessons were never preachy. They were subtle threads woven into the tapestry of our shared experiences. Section 6, The Unspoken Bond. There was a certain magic in those shared silences on the lake. 
We didn't always need words to communicate, a look, a knowing nod, a shared smile. These were the threads that bound us. We'd sit there, side by side, our lines cast in the water, our thoughts drifting along with the current. In those moments I felt an unspoken connection with him, a deep understanding that transcended words. It was a connection forged in the crucible of shared passions, a silent language spoken through the gentle tug of a fishing line and the warmth of the sun on our faces. Section 7. A Legacy of Love and Laughter Grandpa Campbell is gone now. His chair by the fireplace sits empty, a poignant reminder of his absence. But his memory lives on, not just in the countless stories I treasure, but in the man I've become. He taught me the art of patience, the importance of perseverance, and the beauty of finding joy in the simplest things. He showed me that true wealth isn't measured in possessions, but in the richness of experiences and the love we share with others. His legacy is etched into the fabric of my being, a guiding light that continues to illuminate my path. Section 8. The Empty Boat Sometimes when I stand by the lake I can almost hear his voice, feel the gentle pressure of his hand on my shoulder. The water still calls to me, whispering tales of shared adventures. But the boat feels empty now, the silence deafening. The echo of his laughter no longer dances on the wind. And yet, I know he's there, in the gentle sway of the reeds, in the warmth of the sun on my face, in the quiet murmur of the water. He's there in every fish I reel in, in every sunrise I witness, in every moment of quiet contemplation. Section 9, Grandpa's Ripple Effect. Grandpa Campbell may be gone, but his influence, like the ripples from a stone cast into water, continues to spread outwards. I see it in my own children, in their love for the outdoors, in their infectious laughter. They never had the chance to meet their great-grandfather, but they know him through my stories. They carry a piece of him in their hearts, a legacy passed down through generations. And so, the cycle continues. The love, the laughter, the lessons learned on the riverbank, all of it lives on, a testament to the enduring power of a life well lived.